So we're talking about our anniversary Sunday, what we can do. And Christine said, well, we have these windows that are a very special part of our church. And each one has a story. And so Christine's going to come and share a bit of the story. You ready? <laughs> yeah, you're on. Oh, I'm just going to mine. Good morning <laughs> on this special day. There has been an established Baptist assemblage in Port Hope since 1855 when a group of local Christians agreed to form a church and mentioned the Haldeman Association for uh, admission as a sister church. Their aim was to provide for the maintenance of the worship of God, the observance of Christian ordinances, and the preaching of the everlasting gospel, in order that believers may be edified and sinners converted to God. The appeal of their way of thinking soon resulted in a congregation too large for the frame chapel which had been originally constructed. The decision was made to build a larger and more permanent house of worship. The present building was erected in 1867 at a cost of $9,000 on land donated by William Craig, a deacon of the church and mayor of Port Hope. He had purchased the site on the northeast corner of John and Augusta Streets in 1866 at a cost of $800. The official opening of the impressive edifice took place on June 6, 1869. This is an elegant church. Its strong Gothic character is emphasized by the juxtaposition of buttresses on its facade and its magnificent spire. The arched windows and entranceway reinforce the impression of stature and permanence. The rose window, which is above the, right at the back of the church, you can see it from here, and I'll tell you, it's marvelous. If you, if you come here when the sun is shining through it, it's great photography. <laughs> The rose window is particularly beautiful and unique feature. I just wanted to talk about the the, um, the stained glass windows which surround us. I I don't even know the the name of the man who did all these windows, um, but he 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 went from scratch and he put the colours in. He he did everything, and mostly in the 1970s. I think we, we all have a lot to learn from all the people who have donated those windows for them to be here. And um, I'm going to introduce you to some of them. And um, also that we're following in a lot of people's footsteps. And so we have to do our part in adding to the whole church. So the windows are basically Jesus' life from start to finish. And we'll start at the beginning. That's the corner one. And you, you'll be able to see some of them as you, as I, as I go. Um, and this one is, his name will be called Emmanuel to the greater glory of God. This window is presented by Mrs. Fred Forrest Hanna, 1976. And to add to her, she was short in stature, but boy, was she a worker. She had, she would organize a big, huge meal in the, in the church here. And everybody was called to, to contribute and but she, it was just a, a marvelous time for, for people to come in and if they've ne never been here before. And it was held every year. The next one, um, and some people will know, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And this says, 
to the glory of God and in loving memory of their son, George Albert, 1952 to 1964, presented by Albert and Grace Goodrum. Yes? She remembers. Um, It is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness to the glory of God and in remembrance of our baptism into Christ, 1 Romans 6, verse 3. Now, this is the next window, presented by Elgin and Gwen Ball in 1977. And that was in remembrance of their baptism, our baptism into Christ. And... um, They presented that in 1977. I should add in here that the, the archive people from Port Hope came, came into the church. They wanted to see the, the stained glass windows. And, um, they were quite taken aback by the fact that they weren't the old, old stained glass windows that most, some of the churches have. But they did find two or three there on the balcony. Those are the um, original windows and their stained glass. So moving on to the next one. When he saw him, he had compassion. And in appreciation of the ministry of the Reverend J.C. McFarlane in this church and community, 1960 to 1971, And I have to add here, because this is very sentimental for me, because when we first, when we came to Canada and came directly to this church in 1966, Dennis, my husband Dennis, and four small children, all under 20 20 months, (laughs) and we we met Reverend McFarlane, um, here, and he said, where are you staying? Well, at the time, Dennis came by himself, and then we followed. Um, and he, he said, the Queen's Hotel. No, you're not staying at the Queen's Hotel. You're coming with me. So he, they took us in, all of us in for, well, three or four weeks. They, we put them out of their beds, so at that point, we became the family, family of God in this church. So, and all the congregation rallied because we hadn't brought a whole lot of stuff with us. So they, they gave us stuff to make a home. <laughs> so it was really, we were part of the family. But in that window, they were expressing all the work that um, Reverend McFarlane did in the not just in the community, he used to go down to, to the um, jail in uh, Kingston, and he had so many people he was involved with and bringing them out of bad stuff into good stuff. And that's why I say we have a, a, lot, a, a lot of work to be done following in people's footsteps from before. And it says... You should do as I have done to you, to the glory of God. Oh, I moved on to the next one. Sorry. <laughs> number five. I have got numbers here, but then the numbers on the, on the windows. <laughs> I'm just sort of going from there to there. Um, so number five, which is the one down towards Jeff. You should do as I have done to you to the glory of God and in loving memory of the Reverend Emlyn Davis, B.D., B. Little, 1907 to 1974. And he, he was certainly a going concern when he was involved with God's work here. And then number six, this one, to the glory of God and in loving memory of Fred Forrest Hanna, presented by his wife, Cora. See number one. Yes, she was still doing a lot of work here. And um, 
we're on this one, and I haven't got a number for it, but what it says is, He is not here. He is risen to the glory of God and in loving memory of John 1 Wilkinson, 1870 to 1934. Mary I. Wilkinson, 1972 to 1960, presented by their son. And then the next one, <clears throat> I ascend into, unto my father, your father, to you from failing hands. We throw the torch, be yours to hold it high, to the glory of God, and in loving, in memory of the men and women of Canada who have given their lives in the service of our country, in loving memory of our father who died May 29th, 1891, aged 72. They rest from their works and their works do follow them, which they surely do because we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for all the people who were involved in, in forming the church here. That one is in memorial as Jesus is leaving, but he's still working in our lives and in this church very much so. And we praise the Lord for all he's doing for us now. So this is saying, you should do as I have done to you, to the glory of God and in loving memory for all these people who have taken part in being here and working for the glory of God. And we're so thankful for, for all of them. And um, just we'll just praise the Lord for another year.